Here's a quick summary of what we've seen with convergence tests. So we had the geometric series at first, which I didn't list as one of the convergence tests, but if a series happens to fit that form, you have a test for whether it converges or diverges. And then we have these eight other tests that we've run through, and for each one we've seen at least one example of them. So when it comes to testing a given series to see if it converges or diverges, let me give you a little bit of a sense of, of what to try. Just like when you were doing integrals, you had to pick an integral method and then actually run through and compute the integral using that method. The same thing here, when you run across a series and you aren't told what method to use, you'll need to pick out a test to use and then you'll have to know how to run that test and how to draw conclusions with it. So let me give you a little sense of how to pick which test to start with. First of all, you should look to see if the series fits the form of a geometric series. If it happens to fit that form, you can use that conclusion we've drawn there. Or if it happens to fit the form of a P-series, then you can just apply that rule. So it may be that your series happens to be exactly a P-series or exactly a geometric series, and you can simply apply the rules that you know for those. Otherwise, you always want to run through the divergence test first because it's quick and easy and you don't even have to write it down. You can just mentally check and see if the terms of the series go to zero and if they don't you can immediately say it diverges according to the divergence test without having to do more work. The integral test is generally your last resort if you're totally stuck. If it looks like the thing is something you could integrate but it doesn't fit one of the other patterns, then you can try the integral test. The direct comparison test is not one we're generally going to do in examples because anything we could do with the direct comparison test, we can also do with the limit comparison test. And the limit comparison test is a little bit broader and even easier to run. So we'll just stick to the limit comparison test when we need to compare things. So this would be if the series you're looking at looks like a geometric series or a p-series, but it's not exactly equal to one of those, you can try comparing it using the limit comparison test. Specifically, one that you'll find often useful is if you see a rational expression, like one of the examples we did where we had a rational expression and we compared it to 1 over k, that's often one that the limit comparison test is really easy to run because you're just comparing it to a p-series, which is easy to work with and the algebra is pretty quick and easy. The ratio test, again we're going to use that when we talk about what are called Taylor series, which is the application we'll get into after this, but for specifically looking at the convergence of series that you're given, if you see a factorial, think ratio test, or if you see powers of k and it doesn't fit a geometric form exactly, a ratio test will generally work pretty nicely with that. The root test really is most useful when you have something raised to the power of k, some expression, not just a value raised to the power of k, although it would work in that case, but the root test really is helpful when you have, like in the example we had where we had a natural log expression raised to the power of k. And then the alternating series test, if you have an alternating series, of course, think about the alternating series test. You could also try the ratio test in that case. The ratio test is surprisingly versatile. It applies to a lot of things. But generally speaking, just try to run through some of these ideas. Again, first look and see if it fits the P-series or geometric series form. Then try the divergence test. Then see if you recognize a factorial or a power of K or an alternating thing so it fits one of those last few tests, and then see if it can be compared to a geometric or p-series using the limit comparison test. And then if you're totally stuck, your last resort would be the integral test if you have to.